it's very important to have a good villain and Hulk, the problem with Hulk is that he's all powerful, that nothing can hurt him. You can shoot him with anything, he won't die. So Hulk versus the army becomes all quite fast. Until, you know, you present them with a real enemy, somebody who's as strong, maybe a little stronger, as smart, maybe much smarter, and also who's vicious and wants to hurt, you know. And now you have a problem. It's difficult stuff. I mean, Hulk and the Abomination are some of the, uh, the most advanced CG creatures we've ever made before. And they're the stars of the movie, so they gotta look good. That is a huge challenge because the first 95% of that is technical and very difficult, but the last 5% is near impossible. And so that's the hump we have to get over on this movie. We had to create a character that was dominant to Hulk in almost every way. His name was Abomination, so we returned to some of that base material in the comic books. And so Louie and I came up with this idea that Abomination's gamma injections have caused his bones to kind of grow towards the outside of his body. I love that, you know, that bone that comes out here. That's the idea. And we thought it would give us not only a different structure than Hulk, a structure that's got hard surfaces like on his chest and his head and his back, his spine grows out of his skin, and he would look like the abomination. He would be something that is just ugly but giant. He's 11 feet. He's two feet taller than Hulk, which is a significant advantage in our movie. Three, two, one. Stop. Yeah! The motion capture has really allowed us to bring a very organic, human type of animation to our characters very quickly. Well, that was good. nice. Yeah. Yeah. That stop, That's huh? That interactivity is crucial to us. We found that when he jumps and he throws his arms forward and up like this, it feels too much like the Hulk. Yeah. And where this is, he's Big bringing puns. his arms, elbows up. What I wanted to do was really create two characters that had their own signature that each stood out as individuals. Yeah! That weren't just two big hulky guys fighting. That's it! Whoa! That's it! That was nice! The way they move, the way they act, the way they fight is character-driven. Abomination will just change directions and just boom. Yeah, he has the ability to put himself through the concrete, you know, yeah, through the yeah. glass, and there's no grace to that aspect of it. So we're trying to work out choreography, and because the characters are so different, we're looking for different textures in the character, not only in timing, but also how is Hulk different from Abomination? Boom, yeah, exactly. Good, and then watch out for pivoting. Hulk's gonna pivot, you're stuck. Yeah, yeah. You're a boom, boom. To break it down into its simplest of terms, the Hulk is a steel ball, and the abomination is a cubic triangle. How does a steel ball fight a cubic triangle? When we were talking about doing the movement stuff, my thing was lock, load, and fire. Like, he can spring, he can go so fast and so quickly. Because he can go right in any direction at any time. Yeah, he's... he doesn't have to like wind up like the Hulk no. would, he's just he's a special ops guy. Right. It's like a new being, a new creature, a new version of human. Two, one. Keep him upright. The great thing about having Tim here is he's going to be Bolonsky in the film, so we want to try and get some of the elements that Tim brings to Bolonsky into Abomination. So it's, it's absolutely crucial that Tim be here to be able to see what we're doing, to be able to give us input, to be able to marry those two characters together, the characters of Bolonsky and Abomination. But yeah, not looking for your descent, not looking for your landing. Yeah. That's the way. It should be packaged. You're just like, and that's so cool. That's so cool for your That's so cool for Blonsky. Yeah. You're just, it's you're cool. so like that. In contrast to the way that the Hulk moves, I think my character is more spiky and harsh and also shark like at times. It's like, you know, if he hovers, like, and then he turns. If he's looking at you, if he's walking down and he turns and look, you're dead. You know. <laughs> It's like old school theater, I think, really. With, it's high tech version of it, but it's really old movement. It's like back to the early days of theater, really. Three, two, one. Ah! 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 
and you get to get angry and fight and roll around and rah, throw things. I mean, it's pretty cool. We're going out like My this tonight. Here we are. My intention is clubbing. to lose all dignity. <laughs> That's why I signed on to this movie. <laughs> it's kind of the actor's chance to speak to the sort of um, animation guys. There we go, there we go. It's kind of ridiculous, as you can see, but yeah, it's fun. It's extraordinarily embarrassing, and you feel utterly ridiculous. But what they had it with these big monitors up, and then as you were moving, you saw your, your a rough sketch of your character. Yes! That was killer. And then he'd rear up and go the other way. He's like, put me in the suit, mate. Come on, let's go. <laughs> you know? He just likes to get in there and get in the trenches and, and go for it. And that's the great thing about him. Well, you're at an angle, and then you increase the angle. OK. You know what I mean? It was, okay. it was ex I'd never seen this. This was my first time of doing this. And it, I, I thought it was wonderful. Three, two, one. We're in a giant video game, you know? So it's like, before you know it, it's lunch. We're like, oh, hang on a minute. You know? So it's, it's been fun. It's, it's, I can't call it a job. Trying to be cool on this thing. That's all right. Rear up and look down. But rear, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was really important to get not typically, you know, I wish mean, it's not going to look like Tim Roth and, and Hogg's not going to look like uh, like Edward Norton, but just sometimes they move, sometimes they do something, sometimes, you know, a mention moves like this that will remind you of Tim Roth or, or Emil Blonsky, the character he plays in the movie. Ready and action. Okay. We're gonna see a lot of Tim in there. We're gonna see a lot of Tim's eyes and a lot of Tim's mouth. So we're really gonna bring his look and that sort of cheeky attitude he's got as, as Blonsky into Abomination. Good. It's okay. It's good. It's a very strange thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's starting to feel like home in here. It's a little scary. No, this is this is home for us. And that's the beautiful thing about the motion capture is that it gives the animators a really solid base to work from, and it gives them sort of a soul, a little spark of reality, of something that's come from something organic. Yeah. The yeah. stride has to be big. That's key. Yeah. I mean, now that I see what you're doing, I understand. Yeah. I thought you were. You like, can't, no. but it's very hard. You can't. <laughs> I mean, T and talking about, you oh, know. Yeah. But we did that too. He's more of a triangle and he's more of a ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when, when Terry watches the film, he'll be sitting at home and going, you know what? I remember doing that action. And I remember doing this action. It's never used on a frame by frame basis, it's always taken by our animators. And the animators import it into their file, and then they use what works. And what doesn't work, they reinvent. If you can start from realistic motion and work from that, that's where you want to be. Rather than spending weeks and weeks and weeks just getting to that point, it's great to be able to start from there. The motion capture really gave us that basis in human physiology that uh, I don't think we would have been able to achieve so quickly otherwise. Any last words? And then from there, it was weeks of really polishing, making it superhero style motions, making it really fit each plate and fit the story. With Hulk, you know, you can take a human and you can use them as reference for abomination. You can only do that to a certain extent and then you've got to go off into, you know, crazy land. Crazy land. One of the benefits was that all of our technology that we're developing for Hulk, we knew we were going to be able to use on Abomination. But one of the major things that they told us was Abomination's this guy who's like exploded out of his skin and his bones and muscles are like visible. And at that point, we're like, oh God, you know, what are we going to do now? There were certain parts of Abomination that were actually harder to figure out than Hulk because of the exposed bone. Um, the spine was a very difficult thing that we had to tackle, the way that it flares out and the way that it compresses, and also the clavicles being exposed and the hips being exposed. So there's the, the pre-animation stage where we kind of build the theoretical model of what we think is going to work. And then we go in and we give the texturing for the color. We actually do another pass of displacement that kind of gives all the veins and the, the ripped muscle qualities. After that, then we have the blood flow into the muscles. He always has a heartbeat, so you actually see the blood going through his veins at all times. Everybody who works on the movie puts their own little spin on it. All the artists, they're part of the character. It's a lot of fun that way. I mean, they're so proud of it when they're done. And it, it, 
It's gonna look great. So 